North London landlord Charles Reeves had the shock of his life when he returned from working abroad to find his family home transformed by the people he had rented it out to into a cannabis farm. Criminals have been posing as legitimate tenants, but they filled the house with this. Ten tonnes of soil. It caused thousands of pounds worth of damage and it's left the family devastated. Well, we can speak to Charles Reeves. Um, he's back where he works, over in New York, joins us now. Charles, I, I honestly thought this was just something that happened randomly, not very often, pretty devastating. It sounds like this is something that is scamming lots and lots of people. Tell us what happened to you. Well, um, I was coming back to the States and I had uh, I had to get a, a tenant in there. I can't afford for that property to sit empty. And um, uh, these, this estate agent approached me, approached me, approached my family about uh, about a perfect tenant that they had, someone who had credit checks that worked out great, great job. It was a family. And um, they supposedly paid a deposit, then they moved in, and then nothing. There was no rent. Mm -hmm. There was there was nothing. No contact after after a couple of months of, of just trying to figure out where the rent was coming from, if there was any, um, and <laughs> and then we couldn't get in to inspect the place. We couldn't. There were no requests to repair anything, which is kind of common with with a tenant, um, and. Yeah, so it was, it was a so strange circumstance. So, no, they didn't pay the rent. Which is bizarre when you no. think about it. In, in the case I was talking about, they did pay the rent because if they'd paid the rent, you might not have noticed what was going on. Okay, so they yeah. didn't, but they didn't pay the rent. So, you thought there's something funny going on here. You managed to get back into the house. Can I right. ask, what did you see when you went back into the house? First thing I noticed was. I saw this electrical wiring that was running through the house, like up through the stairs. They had this really high gauge wiring um, that had not been there. Obviously, um, it was really hot in the house. It smelled like marijuana. It smelled like soil, <laughs> as as I later found out there was, um, of both in both instances. Uh, it smelled like people were not very clean living there. I mean, it had that sort of human filth smell to it. And, uh, yeah, I, so the first thing I noticed were two rooms where the people who were living there had been sleeping. It's almost like, a, you know, sort of mattress on floor type of living. Mm. And then I went upstairs. There was a big tarpaulin that was covering what used to be my daughter's bedroom. I heard this huge fan noise. I pulled it back, bright uh, sort of amberish lights, core lights. And cannabis plants had, everywhere. Had, had in the your people daughter's done, Had the people done a runner? So distressing. Were, I'm sorry, say that once Were the people still there? Yeah, what had yeah. happened? Yeah, I had I had approached them. I knocked on the door. They came out. I told them who I was, and uh, not long after, they <laughs> skirted off down the road, and I went in, and that's when I noticed everything. And they they I, they've not been seen since. They're, they've been gone. Um, they left behind, obviously, all the cannabis. They left behind phone sims, drinks bottles, and rotting food, and dirty clothes everywhere, and and and, and massive holes in the wall, and ductwork, and uh, and very sketchy uh, electrical works throughout. It was just very. It was a, it transformed the house it, because the house was very, very much. A, it was a family home. It was my family home, and. We left it semi-furnished, and it was in an unlivable state when when I went in. It's cost you thirty grand to repair the property, yeah. and I can also imagine that it's left you feeling pretty unsettled. Yeah, I, the discovery of it was earlier in the year, and I've just basically been buried in work ever since because I, I just I, I have been back four times now to to check up on the progress of the rebuilding work and, and you know, sort of piggybacking onto my own work in the UK. And just, and, um, just to check, sorry? I presume this estate agent that contacted you out of the blue wasn't actually an estate agent. They were in with the tenants, were they? That's right, yeah, yeah. So we, we, we became very suspicious. I mean, obviously, you become suspicious once the rent's not paid, but um, 
the the back and forth that we were having in the uh, the first part with the estate agent was uh, was strange enough that we started doing some investigation work, hired a private investigator, and we eventually found out that the tenant and the and the estate agent were not one and the same person, but they were they were <laughs> intimately tied, and um, yeah, so that's. The, the other thing that's uh, another aspect of it. So when we started, there was there was a deposit scheme where we get this um, governmental certificate that says that a deposit has been made, and it turned out that was fraudulent. Yeah. So we never. Not only did we not get a deposit, we didn't get any rent, and it ended up costing us, you know, about forty grand just in rent we, alone, and then uh, and then of course the rebuilding work. Well, we goodness. really thank you so much for coming to tell us your story, and and it. it creates a warning for anyone else. I would suggest if anyone is contacted by cold-calling estate agents, if it's an estate agent that you haven't checked out and you don't know, while we don't have full regulation of estate agents, check at least it's a member of one of the standard trade bodies and has got some regulation on the back of it. Uh, and be very careful about cold-callers of any variety Charles, unless you're going I to legit ask, check them. Before we let you go, how long did it yes. take from the point where they moved in to the point where you realised they were running a fully functional cannabis farm of 400 plants? How long was that? Uh, they moved in in the first part of June, and I didn't realise... I thought they were just delinquent tenants mm -hmm. until uh, January 20, uh, 20th, 18th, 19th, 20th, somewhere around there, when I went into the property and I immediately realised right. so that it was a cannabis farm. Six or seven months. Uh, the police say it's one of the worst cases of this crime they'd ever seen, and uh, they are... It's under investigation. Let's hope. Yes. Let's hope. Let's hope. You can get some... <laughs> some justice in this. Thank yeah. you. Thanks so I much. I hope so. I hope yeah. so. Gladly. What a shocking case. But, but not unique. That's no. That's what's even more surprising. No. Not unique. Uh, let us know if, if you know if it's happened near your area. Or if it's happened to you.